So I was just about to sit down to have my pudding, and then all of a sudden I realized, hey, maybe I should show you guys how to sharpen a knife. And to show you I ain't clowning around, maybe I'll even shave with it after the end. So before we get started, I just want to start with this. If this is something you don't think you should be doing, don't do it. You know, if you don't think you have that mechanical ability or you got shaky hands or just not good with that stuff, don't do this. You can cut yourself, take it to someone. But if it's something you want to give it a go, this is this is how I do it. Lots of videos out there. You can check those out. But before we get started, you first got to define the problem. So if we look at, say, a knife edge, zoomed in, a properly sharpened edge is going to be nice and pointy at the end. But over time, you know, it rounds out through use and stuff. Maybe you get some chips in it, and it's rounded. So it's not as sharp as it used to be. It's a little dull. you got to push really hard. So you had a nice keen edge. Now it's kind of rounded around, right? So a lot of people, what you do is you get that the big, long stick, you know, the, the piece of steel. And then you, you take your knife. Let's say this is the steel, and you, you drag backwards on it. And you're, you go back and forth. Sometimes you go down to, I'm not going to obviously do that with my finger, and you think that's what's sharpening the knife. It doesn't sharpen the knife, because we still have this problem. Oh, zoom in a little more. We want this, but we got this. And rubbing it on the steel isn't going to turn that into that. What you have to do is remove some of this to get a new edge. So it's back to sharp. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. No machines. Basic life skill. You can get the, the rot rotary wheels and stuff like that. Challenge with that is you can lose a lot of material quick. The less material you have to remove in order to get it sharp again, the better the knife lasts longer and you don't screw it up very quick if you're doing it by hand versus those rotary wheels at a thousand plus rpm you ding the blade wrong and it's you, you took a lot of material off so let's do it by hand basic tools you can do it anywhere you can get creative and use other materials if you if you're in a bind if you understand the basic basic principle of what you're trying to do also when you start out doing this don't do it with an expensive knife Go to like the dollar store. This is not a dollar store knife, but go to a dollar store and get a cheap knife to practice on. You can get them for like three bucks. I would recommend one that sort of looks like this. This is called a Santoku. The reason I recommend this is it's flat, fairly flat on the bottom for the grind. And that's going to come into play when we're putting it on stones and we're doing some sharpening motions. It's easier on a flatter, straighter blade than say a chef's knife where it comes up to a point. There, when you have to do it, you have to like raise the butt of the knife a little bit. Uh, you know, to start off with, I would just say, get a crap knife. Don't mess up your good knives. Again, don't complain to me if you mess up your good knife. Get a cheap knife from the dollar store, something that looks kind of like this, and uh, practice on that. Now let's get started. Real quick, before I take you upstairs and I start sharpening this in the kitchen, let's just talk quickly about equipment. This is what they call a whetstone. It's a combo stone. 400, 1000. Good starter stone. Very, you know, you can take material off with the coarse side, get it pretty damn sharp uh, on the 1000 finishing. You can, you can buy cheap stones and they say a fine stone and their fine stone is like 300. No, you need something a little better than that. So a 400, 1000 is pretty good. And then a belt, a piece of leather of some kind. That and this crazy sharp knife. But I'm going to take it a little higher. I got a 4,000 grit, and then this is a combo, 4,000, 8,000. I don't like the 4,000 on this one, so hence this guy. And then an 8,000 grit stone. And then we'll do leather, but also one side's going to have some buffing compounds. So this will just be a basic setup here. You could pick one of these up at a knife place or Amazon or wherever. I don't know, 25, 30 bucks, super cheap. They last quite a while. And then just get a little chunk of leather with it. You'll have the sharpest knife you've ever had. If you want to go take it up a notch like you can with anything, there's always that option. But that's the gear. Whoops, drop that. You can even get these little stones. 
you know, it's, it's good to just to know how to do it with basic gear, because if you understand what you're doing, um, you know, you can use a little, a small stone. If you're in the bush and all you have access to is a small stone, you can, you know what you're doing. If you have a coffee cup, the, there's all a, a brick. You can sharpen on anything if you have, if you master the basic technique. So hopefully you'll learn a little bit of that. All right, let's get out of here. So what you want to do, soak the stone for 10, maybe 15 minutes is good enough. Get out your knife. Now, depending on the knife and the type of material, you can go a little more shallow. If it's just a low grade stainless, you want to go a little bit steeper. Uh, this is a high carbon steel. You can tell by some of the rust that's on here, it is reactive. If you put like a matchbook under the back for one of these types of blades, that's about the right angle. If it's like a uh, stainless steel German knife, you'll go a little bit, a little bit higher, but it's around 15 degrees for a knife like this. Splash some water on it, have that angle, hold it at an angle here, about 45 degrees or so, pull it back, push it forward. Don't worry about speed, just focus on technique. When you do it, you feel the edge. So the stone was on this edge, it's gonna create a burr as it removes a little bit of material. You wanna make sure you can feel that burr the whole way up the blade. I feel it here. We need a little bit more here so I can just focus on this spot. Flip it over. Same thing. Feel for the burr, almost. Oh, burr on both sides, now I'll just flip it. Okay, now we flip the stone over. I put it in my stone holder just because it is a bit easier. Um, when it's low to the table, there's not much clearance for your fingers. So it is nicer to have it raised. Also, I wiped off the blade. Okay, got rid of the material that's on there. It's still some of it's there, but just give a quick wipe. And if you have a cork, or if you don't have a cork, maybe go to the cutting board and just light pressure just to get rid of the burr that's there. And now we're gonna do this exact same process on the 1000 grit. So we sharpened up the knife, got rid of the burr. Um, just from that alone, it should be sharp enough to just peel hairs off your arm. But we'll take it a step further. Quick, easy tip to get it so it's super sharp. You wanna get yourself a belt, a real leather belt, and it should have a side that's smooth and a side that's a little bit rough. This rough side's been kind of smoothed out just over time, but not the ones that's like a plasticky, shiny leather, real leather, so there should be a smooth side and a rough side. And then we're gonna drag the knife backwards along here. That's called a strop, and that'll polish the knife up so sharp. So what you do now is you hook the belt onto something, 
so you can pull it and make it tight. If you don't have a hook or anything to attach it to, you can put your foot at the other end, step on it, and, and pull it up. But this is tough to film, so here we go. You put it on the belt, and then you pull it backwards. You don't cut into it. You'll cut your belt in half. So you can go heel to toe, toe to heel. Light pressure. So we're going to start on the rough side. And then we'll flip it, go to the smooth side. Let's do the hair test again. Up the sharpness even more, you get a piece of leather with some buffing compound on it. So just, you know, you can do this on a, on a belt. The one I showed you is one I wear. So a different piece of leather. Uh, you get the green buffing compound. You get that at your hardware store, automotive store, whatever it is. Um, I have this on another separate piece of leather because it's much easier to do for this video. Put that on there. What that's going to do is it gives it a very, very fine polish. So that'll take the sharpness up another level. So mine, I happen to put a magnetic sticky back on. So I put it on like this. Stays on there. Okay, you don't have to have that. I'm just showing you mine. Here we go. Same thing. Now we we'll go to rather regular leather. So if you look closely now, that edge should be nice and polished and shiny. You should see almost see a reflection off it. So let's cut something other than my arm. Walmart, you can, you know, everyone's got paper. I don't need the beauty section of a Walmart. So you should be able to cut the paper, no problem. Okay, pulling back should be easy. You should be able to fold it in half with a rounded edge like this and just cut right through it. It might, if it's not sharp, it's gonna skate off that. No problem, you should be able to put, just tappy tap tap right here. Ugh. Instead of having to actually pull back, just do light taps. Should just take little cuts out of it just from that. See? Little cuts. I'm not even pulling it back. Now, that's pretty sharp. If I want to do my face, we've got to level up a little bit more. Now to take it up a notch, it's just the same process, but we're also going to use a 4,000 and an 8,000 stone, and then I'll do this drop. All right, so same process, I'll just high speed that one. Now again, with any stone, you're going to have to clean them and also flatten them, because over time, especially with the coarser ones, they'll dish out. You want it to be flat, and again, there's more expensive ways to do it. You get a, a flat plate with diamond impregnated on it, or... As I said, there's always a cheap way. Let me show you. So this is a back of a tile. It's a, it's a large tile, but <laughs> you get the back of a tile. They're about a buck. You go down to Home and Depot and you pick up yourself a tile. Now this isn't the ideal one I would pick. This is one I happen to have handy. I recommend the one with the uh, honeycomb pattern on the back. And then you just take your stone. Oh boy. There. And you'll rub it up and down on the tile. That'll smooth it out and flatten it. You can get proper things to do it, but cheap way, $1.
this. Now we got a very ripe cherry tomato. We'll cut it in half. All right, so this has so little downforce. We'll just use just the knife. Not holding it down, thin little slices. Now it's sharp. I think it's ready for my face. Okay, so there we go. Shave with it. So we took you from, you know, getting the knife pretty sharp to getting it really, really super sharp. That's how you, you know, this is how I do it. There's other ways you can do it. You know, you can get machines that help you out and all that stuff, but it's just something to be said for doing it by hand. It's also like a bit of a moment of zen. And you're practicing, you got the, put some music on your headphones. Looks like I'm giving everything a massage. That looks kind of weird. Anyways. You know, there's something therapeutic about taking a piece of steel and just getting it really sharp. You did it by hand and then you appreciate it. You know, when you when you cut into that tomato or that steak and you just and it just cuts through. You did that. You took a little time and effort. And now you got a skill that lasts forever. You can teach your kids. And when the zombie apocalypse comes, guess who's chomping the most heads off? <laughs> Doodle bud.